America. Cotton candy. The American bald eagle. Hot dogs. Beer, beer, beer. Milkshakes. Baseball. Hamburgers. Freedom fries. Texas. Bourbon. Moonshine. Root beer float. And blowing shit up. Welcome to another episode of Drinks with Johnny. We're celebrating July the 4th with my good friend, Zachy V. You know I don't want the attention. Thanks for doing the show, bro. Anytime. All right, man, so let's get right into it. I did about 30 seconds of research, a little typo on the Google, and found that the oldest cocktail made in America was in New Orleans called the Sazerac. Naturally. Yeah, of course. I mean, you, you guys could probably fact check and come up with a million other ones that were there, but that's what I figured out, so that's what we're gonna fucking make today. Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. So, a typical little history lesson on the Sazerac is that it was originally made with French brandy, which makes sense being from New Orleans. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna take one sugar cube, drop it in there, you're gonna take a two ounce pour of some rye whiskey. Um, this is some pretty good shit actually, I don't know if you've had it before. If I did, I wouldn't remember, so. Perfect. And as we like to do here at Johnny's, we add a little extra. <coughs> now right here, you're gonna break it up, get it nice and broken up, probably use the back side of your spoon. And you don't need it to be like a thousand percent dissolved in there. You just want to definitely get rid of any sort of chunkage or anything like that. When's the last time you were in New Orleans and had one of these? Oh man, the good news is I can't remember, which means it's probably fun. So Peychaud's bitters, it's the red bitters. Um, you're gonna need a little bit of that. It's a little different than the normal aromatic that we use in uh, old fashioned. So I'm gonna take four dashes of that. And then we are going to add our ice and stir. Now while I'm stirring this and adding ice, Zach, why don't you tell me a little bit about what this holiday means to you? What does the Baker household look like on the July 4th? Oh man. I mean, every year we mix it up. I mean, Huntington Beach is known for being like a mecca for 4th of July. Yeah, the biggest 4th of July parade this side of the Mississippi. Yeah. As they fame themselves. It's awesome, man. And being right down there, you know, get in the thick of it, see all your friends, you know, you run into each other and yeah. drink everywhere and have fun. Get on your bikes and ride, as uh, Queen once said. That's right. But yeah, man, it's just a great time to hang out with friends, family, barbecue, drink, ride bikes. Well, that's what uh, we do here in America. That's right. All right, let's get back to this drink. This is the important part. This is kind of what sets this drink apart, is you're gonna do a absinthe rinse on the glass. Now, um, you know, usually you do a rinse, you just pour just a little touch and roll it around, but you know, here, drinks with Johnny, I gotta be an asshole. <laughs> because not only am I gonna rinse it, they usually waste, right? They pour it out into the gutter over here or something like that. I say waste not, want not, you know what I mean? Yeah. See where I'm getting at? <laughs> That's definitely one way to do it. We're just gonna pour right on top of that bitch. And now we're gonna get ourselves a little lemon zest. You're gonna fold rind side out, and you're just gonna kinda of squeeze it over here, kinda of get the aromas going, and get the oils from the rind out on the rim and inside, and a little bit into your drink. So I'm just gonna drop it in. And here you got it, the Sazerac, oldest drink in America. All right. Let me know. Now that we got our drinks, let's move over to the couch and talk America. Let's do it. All right, Zach, now I got you here on the couch. We're celebrating 4th of July. Fuck Why don't yeah. you give me your top 10 most American things? A bald fucking eagle. The American bald eagle. This is a good one. Have you ever seen one in person? I'll tell you what, I've definitely seen a bald eagle in my motherfucking dreams. <laughs> soaring, baby, soaring. All right, that's number 10. Let's get to number nine. What's number nine? Man, the fucking United States Armed Forces. That's pretty fucking America. Pretty fucking badass. To all you out there, thank you very much yep. for all your fucking sacrifices. We really appreciate it. All right, let's get to number eight. That's higher up on the list, so these are non- uh, Not in order. order. These are, yeah, yeah, sorry. These are not in order. Bruce Springsteen. Ooh, the boss. That was number seven. What do we got for number six? Football. Fucking football, Sunday. Not, not soccer. No, 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 American fucking football. 
The U.S. women's soccer team is pretty fucking good, though. Oh, they're destroying everybody right now. It's yeah, fantastic. Congrats. Congrats um, to them. What, what else has you got on the list? Chevelle Super Sport. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That is fucking, that's right on right there. Right on, brother. That's a fucking Chevy, baby. It's pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst Blue Ribbon, the drink of every American's choice, I think. Rocky Four. Ooh, so American against the <laughs> Russian. That is so fucking American. Oh, that was, that's actually kind of my favorite one. I mean, the, first, the original is fucking super dramatic, but... Damn, do I love Rocky Floyd. Oh, it's the best, man. Uh, Jimi Hendrix playing the national anthem. Whew. At Woodstock, baby. Ooh, that was incredible. I mean, there wasn't a fucking sober ear in the house, and they fucking loved it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> including him. Um, 2019 Motor Trend Truck of the Year, Dodge Ram. Ram. I like it. Harley Davidson is pretty good. Harley Davidson is very fucking American. Nothing like getting on the hog and fucking strapping it between your legs. <laughs> Going down the road for millions of miles and just uh, <laughs> millions of miles. <laughs> living off the road, baby. Man. <laughs> just out of curiosity, what's going on over here? Let me try this one. Yummy. Mm. Oh, those are just my friends Anna and Vicky over there. They're sharing each other's all-American apple pie recipes. How you guys doing over there, ladies? Doing great, Johnny. This list is, uh, I don't know what number we're on. Oh, I but think we lost count. I mean, it wasn't in any order anyway. We're just going to let it ride. Baseball. Baseball, America's pastime, of course. Here's the pitch. It's going, going, it's in there. A new Major League record. I think a lot of our fans know your affinity for baseball given your tattoos a couple of your posts and everything like that on your Instagram um, but I don't know if all of them really understand what uh, kind of baseball player you were in high school could you tell me a little bit about that some highlights to that for you and what position did you play I mean man well, speaking of Bruce Springsteen let's bring up glory days huh no man I've always loved baseball it's what I it was the first thing that I loved when I was like a small kid Later on in life, I still love it. You know, I still get excitement. I still love going to games, still love watching it. I love playing it. My favorite thing about it is that it's a team sport. You know, there's star players and stuff, but you depend on everyone. It's not yeah. one person cannot carry an entire baseball team. It's very evident that you need to have a full package. Totally. You know, it gives an opportunity for, I mean, there's players from all over the world, all shapes and sizes. Not to say that you're on the smaller side, but you're on the yeah, smaller yeah. side. And there's guys like, Jose Altuve, that's the I same, love Altuve, same yeah. size as you. And he's just a, a superstar. So win as a team or lose as a team. And that's, that's why baseball has been so cool to me. Um, and the fact that living in Southern California, uh, Orange County specifically, and having the probably the greatest one of the greatest players that's ever lived right down the street is pretty Pretty cool. incredible. And what, what position did you play? What uh, positions? I know that baseball, you usually kind of play a couple here and there. You know, I played all over the infield. Uh, when I was a little kid, I played catcher for a little bit in the competitive years. Nice. High school days, I played third base. It was just fun. It's just one of those things that I've always really loved. You know, I love baseball and I love music. You know, you like I said, you only get a few of those things in a lifetime. The things that you're very passionate about or, or rather just make you happy, you know, like things that you just genuinely make you happy, you know, and that's something that you never want to take for granted. Like Sazerac. Like Sazerac, <laughs> fucking, they, they make me extremely happy. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. And we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. So speaking of baseball, I know you. I know how you play. You play right-handed, correct? Yeah. You play baseball right-handed, but you're a left-handed guitar player. Yeah. Okay. How did that come about? I mean, like, how did you realize that? Did you try and play right-handed guitar first, or vice versa? Or never. I learned how to write left-handed. Uh, picked up a guitar left-handed. Um, and then baseball is just naturally, right. I'm just full ambidextrous. That's I can, crazy. I can write right-handed. That's why I won't pick up a right-handed guitar because I don't know the power that it possesses. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> exactly. And you don't want that when you're I drinking the that. amount we're drinking. I do not want that. And I said, oh boy, this is it. This stuff is really as good as they say it is. I thought becoming a rock star was impossible. It was just mm -hmm. one of those things like becoming a, a famous A-list movie star or something. It was a dream but a, fuck, a dream so far down the road, like one of those dreams you set so high, like, wow, that would be amazing. Yeah. But I probably, I probably have a better chance of becoming a baseball player because I can work hard towards that. 
I was as passionate about music as I was baseball, but music came in the time of my life where you're becoming an adult, you have to make decisions about life, true life decisions. So I stopped playing baseball. And, and it, it you know, broke my parents' heart and, and, it, and it hurt me too, but it was, I was a little punk rocker. I was the only kid on the baseball team with two lip rings and bleached hair, and that didn't really go well with the coach. So me and him butted heads. And I, I just said, you know what? Fuck this, this dream I have is no longer a dream. This is what I'm going to do. And you, you set your sights on it and you're like, all right, we're going for it all in. Crazy, and, and that's what I did. And that's, I think that's what we all did. There wasn't, absolutely. there was no plan B. I never thought about uh, what would happen if the band didn't work out. It never crossed my mind. It wasn't like we didn't have a slew of adults around us saying like, <laughs> you, this ain't gonna work out, this ain't gonna work out. It was just like, well, fuck you, I'm gonna do it anyway. Like, yeah, there's no other choices. It's what we love doing. You know, I just keep that mentality. I think if there's anything that you love that you're, you're truly passionate about it, you know, you find a way to make it work. And we're obviously, we're truly blessed. And, and I believe that there's so much luck involved. I'm not just gonna say, oh, it's, you know, we're it's just our talent and our hard work. And work ethic. Not. We worked hard, but we worked hard because we loved it. But our luck- There's an adage for that. It's uh, luck is the residue of the ready. And you know, you gotta be prepared. As you can hear your story right now, you can hear, you're preparing yourself for the moment to come. And that's the whole thing. You just got to be prepared for that moment to come. That's a lesson for you, people. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good time to check in on the ladies again. Let's see what they're up to. How are you guys doing over there? Still doing great, Johnny. You got anything coming up with uh, Vengeance University and uh, summertime releases? Anything coming up around the pipe? Like right now, I have new designs ready. I was going to release them, and then I backed off. and just held off. Sometimes it's better to just put something on the back burner until you find something that you become excited about. Um, and the truth is, is I, what really got me excited was A7X World, um, basically taking back the power you know, within the band, reaching directly to our fans, making stuff that we all love, and, and having fun with it. Absolutely. Um, in a way that our fans can appreciate, because th that just doesn't happen. And why it hasn't happened is because for so many years, forever, I mean, it's, there's been this like monopoly of these huge companies and they kind of run the show and I got sick of seeing our fans complaining that they weren't getting orders or they didn't like what they got or why wasn't this happening I, th I think like our fans I, w I was getting pissed you have to be excited about it you absolutely and if you just try and put something out because you're on a schedule or on a timeline or because somebody tells you that it's a you know it's a good quarter to put something out like I don't even know what the <laughs> fuck that means I don't <laughs> no, I'm not no. operating on a you know a timeline of when it's best to sell an album I don't I don't give a fuck. It's, it's art. It is truly art. Like people can think about it however they want, but writing music is fucking art. And at the end of the day, you ain't gonna ask fucking Picasso to not be inspired and just put, put another fucking ear in a wrong position just because you want something out at the time, you know? A lot of the world would probably ask that of him. <laughs> and that's why they're not, and that's why they, they'll never understand what it's like because people like to ask, you know, a lot of, and, and that's totally fine, but like, What's most important is always coming back to remembering why you wanted to do this in the first place. And I still feel that about baseball, why I wanted to play it. It's because it's fucking fun. Like find what you're passionate about and go for it. Someone out there is gonna fucking love it. That's the bottom line, man. Courtesy of fucking America. America. It's natural that we are proud of our history. All right, man, I think we've covered everything America today. I think it's about time for us to enjoy ourselves and have a little party with the fam. What do you think? Sounds fucking awesome. All right, let's, let's take a walk. All right, bye ladies, thanks for being with us today. Bye, bye Johnny, bye, Zachy. Bye, ladies. Happy 4th of July to everyone. I really tried to get something American, but you know what? We're in Southern California, let's mix it up. We're just hanging out, drinks with Johnny again. We got some fucking crazy characters hanging oh, out. We got Eddie Scott in here. <laughs> We got this motherfucker hanging out. Are you ready? Out. Are you ready, baby? I'm fucking ready. We're this gonna one. fucking hang. We're gonna have a fucking so, beautiful going, time. Real life. Real life. Hey guys, hey. It, it's Brandon Seller from, oh my god, from Drinks with Johnny, the other show. Oh my god, I'm right here. <laughs> we actually like each other. We do, we do. We drink together <laughs> off the show and on the show. On, more on the show, yeah. yeah. Now that's really good. <laughs> it's actually not me. It's an Aperol spritz. <laughs>
<laughs> Winner gets five bucks. I'm racing Cash Miles and River. All right, let's see what happens. You? I'm going. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go! Oh, oh. oh God, you're wrecking the whole thing. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. oh I thought you guys would be a challenge. No! Oh, River! River gets five bucks. It's a lot tougher than it looked. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you, I'm gonna take you to school on the court, bro. One day, one of these days. How about pretty horse for your house? Let's do it. Oh, All right. A horse for your house, right? Yeah. Let's do it. Horse for the house. So if Pink you slip win, on. If you, if you win, I take a tour around the world. Take it to North Korea? Why not? All right. Well, how about that one? North Korea, okay, right? And if, and if you beat him, he beat the house. He already, he already said pink slip on the house. And all right, all right. Awesome, right? Depends what, the kilo? Thank you, everybody, for checking in to another episode of Tricks with Johnny. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> Oh, he's been having less love.